when you're trying to understand what might be wrong with an air conditioning system and how you might go about fixing it, it all kind of boils down to just understanding how these things actually work. Now, these systems, they're very dynamic. There's a lot of variables in play, like indoor temperature, outdoor temperature, the amount of refrigerant in the system, the airflow through the system. Uh, there's a lot more variables in that. But when each one of these variables change, it can also change all the others. So understanding dynamics can be a little hard to wrap your head around. So in an attempt to make this easier for everybody to understand, I decided to just sit down, build my own interactive simulator of an actual running air conditioning system that allows you to change all these variables. You can do a dirty air filter, a dirty outdoor unit, a dirty indoor unit. We can even change temperature inside the house to see how all these things change the system performance. Now this thing's 100% free. You don't have to sign up for anything to get to it. You just follow the link I put below in the comment section and go straight to playing with it. So I'm just gonna take a minute or two real quick just to show you some of the features of this thing so that you can just immediately go start playing around with it and learn how an air conditioning system actually works. Now I made this thing to be pretty comprehensive, but I also wanted it to be beginner friendly. So one of the first things I wanna show you is if you scroll down on here, you're gonna see a glossary. So if you don't know what superheat is or subcooling or saturation temperatures, you can always type it in, look it up, and it'll give you an explanation of what that is. Now in the middle here, we have the main simulator and all the controls. Uh, all you gotta do is select the refrigerant type on the system. So I have quite a few of them up there. Let's do 454B, the new stuff. Um, and then you have the tonnage of the system itself. So if you have a three ton air conditioning system, 2.5, whatever it is, you can always select that. Uh, we also have a CFM target per ton. Uh, usually this is either 350, 400 or 450. If you don't know what it is, just go with 400. And then we have a target subcooling number. This is going to be on a data plate on the outdoor unit. Um, this is a number we use when we're trying to properly charge a system, determine if we have the right amount of refrigerant in it. Now we have outdoor temperature here. We have indoor temperature and we can change all that. So if it's really hot in the house, we can change that indoor temperature and you can see how it changes the pressure on your gauge manifolds if you had them hooked up to the outdoor unit. We can also change our blower speed. We can turn it down. We can speed it up. Um, and that will also show you how pressures and temperatures change when you do that. So if you're ever in a, in a situation where you might not be getting cold enough air to a faraway room and you decide to bump up the blower speed just to try to push it out there, you can see how it might actually affect the refrigerant cycle in the system. Now over here we have charge, all right? And this will tell you 100% means the proper charges in the system. Uh, so we can play with that as well. We can simulate a you know, a leak in the system where we start losing charge. And by the way, all the alarms come up when something's really going wrong with the system. Uh, we can also overcharge it as well, put way too much in there. Then we have the reset button up here. It just sends everything right back to where you started again. Now over here, we have all our dirty filters, dirty coils, and we can play around with that as well. So we can see how a dirty air filter is going to affect system performance, change pressures and temperatures, what kind of alarms might pop up with a filter that's really bad. And we also have a drop down menu here that allows you to select what kind of blower you have in the indoor unit. And this is pretty important when you're talking about dirty air filters because these different type of blowers react differently. So if you have one of these fancy new variable speed ECM motors, and you have a dirty filter, you can see it doesn't really change much at all because the whole purpose of that motor is to maintain that airflow. Now, most systems, if you don't know what it is, it's probably gonna be an ECM torque. And with a dirty filter, you, you'll see a little bit of a change. Might not be as drastic as a PSC motor. Now, these are the older motors. These are the ones that simply can't push back against resistance at all. And this is the biggest effect you're gonna see on a system with a dirty filter. So you can see how radically everything changes. Um, and over here, you can see how our evaporator coil is frozen over um, just because we didn't have enough airflow. Now we can hit reset and we can do the same thing with the evaporator coil. If that starts getting really dirty, we can see how that affects the system, what kind of alarms pop up. We can also have a freezing coil and we can do this with the outdoor unit as well. You can see rising head pressure. Now this TXV slider over here, you can actually take it out of auto, put it in manual override and simulate a situation where you might have a thermal expansion valve that's stuck wide open or throttled all the way closed. 
and it shows you how it really affects the system and what kind of alarms come up and problems you could be dealing with in those situations. Now, here's another cool feature I kind of worked in for beginners. You can actually uh, track why each one of these metrics move when you move another. So, for example, if we were to look at our suction pressure here, it's right now, let's reset it. It's at 111. If I wanted to track why that would move, I would just click on suction pressure. All right. And so now if I make any changes, it's going to tell me why that particular change dropped or increased my suction pressure. So if I increase my air filter and make it dirtier and dirtier, and then I hit explain this change, boom, it's going to tell me why that dirty filter dropped my suction pressure. I mean, you can do this with all the different variables that are on here. And that's about the gist of it. If you want to go play with it, go have fun. And if you have any questions or comments on it, just leave them below and I'll get right back to you.